Let us see if the elements analyzed in Baker Street and this cemetery have something in common. This rope is only worn on one side. This rope is only... This rope is only worn on one side. The rope used to tie up the Bishop of Knightsbridge came from this cemetery. It is only worn on the one side because it is used to lower coffins into graves. Closed. A leaflet for the soup kitchen. This leaflet is dated for the day after tomorrow. The tickets for the soup kitchen are given out on the same day. Only somebody who works there could have written on it. This shovel belongs to the cemetery workers. Let us see if the elements analyzed in Baker Street and this cemetery have something in common. Black and damp earth. Let us see if the elements analyzed in Baker Street and this cemetery have something in common. Earth freshly turned over, still damp. This dark, damp earth is the same type as that which was found at the Bishop of Knightsbridge's home. It came from a grave then. What a lovely thought. This must be the gravedigger's cabin. Well, judging by the state of this place, they don't work very often. Let us see if the elements analyzed in Baker Street and this cemetery have something in common. Granite. These stones are of the same granite. These stones are of the same granite. These stones are of the same granite. Granite. Let us... These stones... These, the, the black paint. The same black paint covers these stones. This black painted stone is identical to the fragments found in the rope which we analyzed at Baker Street and in the footprints of the Bishop of Knightsbridge's murderers. Everything coincides, Watson. The fragments of granite at the bishop's home came from the tombstones of this cemetery. As well as the rope that was used to restrain the poor man. One of those used to lower the coffins. I can think of only two reasons why anyone should happen to spend a great deal of time in a cemetery. Either he is at rest here, or he works here. At least one of the bishop's murderers is employed here. A shame. If he was at rest here, it would have made our job easier.
Let's look for a mobile soup kitchen, Holmes. Buy my flowers, my lord, for your dear departed. A circulating soup kitchen. Let's look for a mobile soup kitchen, Holmes. Holmes, the man from the soup kitchen isn't only in voluntary service. Look. A money game. Oi, oi. We're giving out free soup after mass right here. Don't hesitate. Come get yours. All thanks to Prince Woodville's kind generosity. A ticket for a hot bowl of bacon soup. Excuse me, my good fellow. You don't look like the needy. We're not here for the soup. We're merely passing through. But I would like to commend you for your good charity. Nah, it's the Prince of Woodville who's the charitable one. All I'm doing is filling the bowls. For the first time ever in this area, someone's thinking of the poor people here. Look around you, at every street corner, you'll find someone giving out soup, just like me. I grew up here, and I can promise you, it's the first time the Toffs have thought about us. And no one tries to take advantage of this? No, mister, that's not possible. You have to exchange a ticket against a bowl. The tickets have the day's date on them, and are handed out after mass. That way no one can cheat. Bowl of good bacon soup isn't for you, gentlemen. We're looking for two people called Grape Abe and Kurtz. Do you know them? Can't you see I'm giving out soup? You again. You can't have any soup. You're too rich. It's for the poor, not the toffs. And what would you say to relieving two toffs of their wallets by giving them a chance at dice? <laughs> With great pleasure. What do you want to bet? Your ring against my friend's superb silver watch. Holmes, I inherited this watch from my brother. It has a great sentimental value. Watson, show your watch to our friend here. Done. Make yourselves at home. All right, mister. First who gets 36 points wins. Perfect. Aren't you going to leave me alone? Can't you see I'm busy? We win. Hey, not so fast. We'll play again. Out of the question. You have lost. You owe me your ring. 
Oh, it means a lot to me, this ring. Me dad gave it me before he died. He choked on his own glass eye. Me mum didn't get over the shock of it, and she killed herself by smashing her head open with her wooden leg. And she'd only just heard that me sister, who's a prostitute, had caught an embarrassing disease that made all her hair fall out. And worse, <laughs> our dog got run over when he... As this ring holds such sentimental value for you, I will allow you to keep it. What would you say to exchanging that against some information about Grape Ape? That seems like a fair deal, don't you think? <laughs> Grape Ape works with us. He usually deals with the tickets, but we haven't seen him for a few days. Where is he usually to be found? Well, last time I saw him, he was with his mates from the dispensary. Then that deal with the morgue. Now, that's all I know. It is quite good enough. Keep your ring, my good man, as a souvenir of your poor father. A souvenir of me dad, me mum, me sister, and me dog. One further thing. You said that Grape Ape's friends work at the morgue. Which morgue? The morgue at the dispensary. I must say, they got a funny job. They wash the dead, dress them, cut their hair. They clean the blood off the floor, chase the rats, stamp on the cockroaches. Mister, I can tell you, I prefer giving out soup. There isn't a certain Kurtz amongst the employees. Listen, we didn't play for info about the whole city. I'm not telling you anything else. The dispensary has got its own morgue. Interesting. Well, yeah, I've just told you so. It's the one that all the undertakers prefer. Think about it. It's just next to the cemetery. Thank you, my good man. Goodbye. Yeah, goodbye, mister. Closed. Even here, decidedly, the poor people have been abandoned to their fate. Whitechapel Street. We are in one of the... Let's go to the public dispensary. How can I help you? Tell me, Doctor, do you have a morgue in your dispensary? Yes, it is the busiest place in the building. We would like to see it. The door at the far end. The one with the unpleasant smell. Very good. Farewell, Doctor. See you soon, perhaps. And take care of yourself. Look, Holmes, a list of the recently dead. How sad. Hmm, I see names that have something in common. I understand now why my colleague keeps quiet about his morgue. This place is a real mess. Concentrate, Watson. We must look for clues about Grape Ape's friends. Look at the state of the instruments. They've probably never been cleaned.
This is Kurtz's overall, so he really does work at the morgue. Strange that he left his overall here. Holmes, this is Kurtz. We've just found one of the Bishop of Nicebridge's murderers. I need something. Perfect. I need something. We must find the place indicated with the cross on the map we found in the morgue. Two keys. A small metal stem. Well, well, this Kurtz was carrying a lot of things. We must find the place indicated with the cross on the map we found in the morgue. Perfect. It's open. Here, this hut is on the map. Let us search it from top to bottom, Watson. Oh, what a jumble. Impossible to open it. Look, 
This chest has been nailed to the floor. This box has been placed so that no one can move or open it. Look, this ch Impossible. Look. How is it that there is no room in this cemetery? Impossible to open it. Bags filled with nails. There are a lot of them. Well, really. I can see a large crack. I'll need something thin. Bags filled with nails. I can see a large crack. I'll need something th A hole was drilled a short while ago. There is a sack inside this hole. Let us see what is inside it. We are making headway. How do we know what this means? This message confirms that we are on the right track. Valuable objects, but what are they doing here? This must be the gravedigger's cabin. Well, judging by the state of this place, they don't work very often. Let's find the lover's tree homes. Here is our tree. Let us examine the inscriptions. Sally and John. This design was the last to be done. Sally and John is engraved here as a symbol of their love. Nothing of interest here. Yes, it must be there. I need something. I need something. This shovel belongs to the cemetery workers. You frighten me, Holmes. I need something.
This must be the grave. Dig quickly, Watson. Very well, Holmes. Look, a metal box. The lock on this box is rather sophisticated. This box comes from a bank. The criminals must have held on to it after a hold-up. Watson, come and keep your revolver at the ready just in case. Open up. We're not the police. Do not be alarmed. That's a strange way of reassuring someone. Holmes, they are children. My God, one of them is hurt. What do you want? Don't come any closer. Are you the police? Don't be afraid. I am a doctor. I'm going to look at your friend's wound. Wait, Watson. I've got some questions to ask these children. This is urgent, Holmes. In this filthy place, the risk of infection is very high, and the wound could get worse with every second lost. The immediate danger for these children is not so much the wound as Mr. Fletcher. Who? Look at the wound, Watson. It's thin and precise. It was made by a sharp, well-kept blade. Any other blade, less well-kept, would have torn the tissue around it, and its size would be irregular. So what does that imply? In this area, who would take such great care with a blade? A butcher, of course. And the only butcher in the area is Samuel Fletcher, who at this moment is replacing a window that has been forced open. He's a man to hold grudges, as anyone around here will tell you. The children are in danger. A man as skillful with a knife as a butcher, and with a bad reputation to match, could easily strike a fatal blow by cutting the child's jugular. If he hasn't done it, it's surely because these little thieves broke into his shop at night to steal a piece of meat. The poor lighting in this area saved them. I can assure you that Mr. Fletcher has spent the day trying to trace these children, and if he finds them, wounds will be the least of their problems. That's... that's true. What do you want? Don't let the butcher find us. I could give Mr. Fletcher a compensation for the damage to his property, and he would certainly give up trying to find you then. But for that, you'll have to cooperate. Or else? Or else he'll likely find a less agreeable way of repairing the damage. Wait, mister. I know everyone here. I'll help you. Only protect us from the butcher. I am looking for Kurtz. Tell me where I can find him, and I'll smooth things over with Mr. Fletcher. Everyone here knows Kurtz. He's the worst person in the area. We call him the Colonel because he fought against the Zulus in Africa. He got chucked out of the army because he's completely crackers. He lives at number eight, Batty Street. Good. Watson, see to the wound. Then we will settle the problem between these young men and Mr. Fletcher. We must protect these children from that butcher, Holmes. It won't be necessary. I've had dealings with Samuel Fletcher before now. He's not the monster I've made him out to be. If he had wanted to kill them, he would have done so, even in dim light. By wounding the little thief, he wanted to warn him never to set foot in his shop again. Forget Mr. Fletcher, Watson. You... you mean you lied to frighten those poor children? Exactly. Clever, wasn't it? Well, mister, that's a mighty fine outfit you're wearing there. You stand out like a sore thumb, and that's no lie. Watch that you don't get it all dirtied up, but you'd be welcome to come back to my place. It's not far, and I'd sponge it down for you. <laughs> <laughs> don't go back to Jenny's place. <laughs> You'll get malaria. <laughs> Thank you, madam. I'm certain that you would make a very good job of it. Uh, that will not be necessary, however. Uh, but your thought was a kind one. We'd best be leaving now, sir. Here, please accept this sovereign as a token of my gratitude for your concern. Well, I never. 
thank you. That's right generous of you, my uh, lordship. You are very welcome, madam. Madam, he calls me. Bless my garters. What a gent. If you're ready now, sir. Yes, let us go. What a remarkable man, the Prince Woodville, to talk to such a woman as though she was an equal. Let's find Batty Street. Whitechapel Street. Nothing of interest here. Street. Appalling, and the smell. But what can have happened here? Stay calm, Watson. Take note of every detail and be careful not to move anything. Very well, Holmes. Someone wrapped some meat up in this newspaper. The blood is still fresh. Grapes! What are they doing there? This is yesterday's newspaper. And O'Curd served as a Boer commando. He fought against his country. The dog's bowl is empty. Someone brought food for the dogs, probably just before the fight broke out. And just after they had been fed, they attacked a man to eat him. Incredible. Let us look at our deduction board, Watson. material on this tray is rather odd. Small burnt balls. A pipe with a strange smell. A small burner. There can be no doubt. 
Judging by the material on the tray and the pipe, the man smoked opium. Opium? I doubt if this man could have made his drug here. He would have needed a real laboratory. This part is in shreds. The skin tissue has decomposed, yet the death is recent. What a horrible wound. The skin was deeply torn. What a horrible wound. Size 9. Hobnail boots like those worn by laborers. This part is in shreds. The skin tissue has decomposed, yet the dead. The skin was deeply torn. What a horrible wound. This bandage is a day or two old, no more. This bandage... What terrible wounds! The dogs must have been rabid! Only a dog could inflict so deep a wound, but it appears that the wound was gnawed at afterwards. It is a dog bite. I can see the tooth marks. This part is in shreds. The skin tissue has decomposed, yet the death is recent. military badge of the 58th Infantry Regiment of Her Majesty and a letter stipulating Kurtz's exclusion from the unit. He served in 1881. At that time, the regiment served in South Africa. Kurtz was in the Boer War. A newspaper covering the war in South Africa. Kurtz must have been following the war with some interest. The Boer War is abominable, and it still rages. A torn piece of a letter. It seems to be a letter of dismissal. 
Apparently, our friend Kurtz served in both camps in South Africa and was never a colonel, but that doesn't surprise me. A traitor, deserter, and a false colonel. What a charming gentleman. This bandage is a day or two old, no more. Please take note, Watson. The same finger that we found at the Bishop of Knightsbridge's house. Holmes! Let us look at our deduction board, Watson. Thank <laughs> you. 